Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'll be sharing my thoughts on the latest episode of The Walking Dead Chokepoint. As always, I won't be holding back on any spoilers, so please do bear that in mind. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. Chokepoint reminded me a lot of last week's instalment due to it having two separate plots running parallel throughout, with one of these stories ending up being much better than the other. I enjoyed the time spent with Daryl and Connie a lot more than everything involving the kingdom, and overall I feel that this is a weaker instalment all round than the previous outing, however it was still enjoyable despite it including some very questionable and corny moments. I'll start with what I consider to be the weakest aspect of this episode, that being the narrative of the kingdom. Jerry and this woman who's been on the show for quite a long time but whose name I still don't know, visit Ezekiel to tell him that they were threatened by a group who want them to pay a toll for the road that leads into the kingdom, spelling travel for everyone who wants to travel to the upcoming fair. Jerry hands Ezekiel a note from a group known as the Highwaymen which demands goods in exchange for passage. The Highwaymen. Why do the groups on this show always have awful names? Anyway, this is all sounding very much like how the saviors operate, and there's a suggestion thrown around that this group could be led by ex-savior Jed, at which point Carol interrupts and says, Oh no, it isn't Jed. Definitely not Jed, because I burnt him. There were a few funny moments involving the characters at the kingdom this week, and the way Carol shrugged off this suggestion whilst knowing full well that she killed Jed's entire group was one of them. I think it is a bit weird that no one questioned her as to why she didn't think it was Jed, but maybe this is a secret of Carol's that will come out at a later date. Ezekiel rounds up his soldiers and heads off to kill the highwaymen before Carol suggests that maybe they should talk to them instead, to which the king reluctantly agrees. The meeting then plays out between the two groups and it was very hit and miss. To set the scene we have this awful corny music playing in the background while some guy is walking amongst mannequins and shadows talking about being the highwaymen. I'm sure this is supposed to be a tense moment but I just couldn't take it seriously at all. Now this might not be this guy's fault, maybe it's just me, but his voice made me laugh because it sounded like me doing a very bad impression of an American cowboy. Hey, I'm a big scary man. I'm the highwayman. Give me your stuff now. I don't know, perhaps this isn't a fair criticism at all, but this guy was there trying to be all stoic and manly, because I'm a big man and I'm very manly, and I just thought it was a bit dumb. I didn't find it intimidating at all, instead I just found him a bit of a joke. Although I don't think I was supposed to laugh at this guy when he was first introduced, the rest of the scene that follows was clearly played out for comedy value, again with mixed results. After managing to get an upper hand in the situation, Carol and Ezekiel decide to strike a bargain, asking the highway men to work for them in exchange for allowing them to attend the fair in order to trade their goods. It's at this point that Jerry starts to whisper to Ezekiel, and I I thought that Jerry was telling Ezekiel that he didn't agree with their proposal. However, it turns out that Jerry was just asking the king to get his sword back. This was pretty funny, and to be honest, I should have really expected Jerry to do something like this in a serious situation, given his history of bad timing and bad jokes. I might have been more critical of this if it was someone else who did it, but Jerry gets a free pass for me because he's a silly character and I like him. I mean, how can you not? He's just a lovable dude who I'd quite like to go have a beer with, so please, The Walking Dead, don't kill Jerry. Anyway, at first, the highwaymen aren't keen on Ezekiel's offer, at which point Carol tries to emulate Jerry by also trying to make the audience laugh when she says to them, when's the last time you've seen a movie? With it turning out that this is what finally convinces the highwaymen to work for Ezekiel. Oh god, I've got to stop doing that. Yep, they decide not to kill anyone because Carol offers them the chance to watch a movie. Oh dear. As you can guess, I didn't laugh. I mean, if you found it funny, then I'm glad you did. But for me, this was almost bordering on being as bad as that Martha scene in Batman vs Superman. It was just so cringeworthy. I know I just mentioned BVS, a DC film, but this moment also reminded me of something you'd see in a Marvel film. You know like when Star Wars starts doing the dance off at the end of the first Guardians film. And before everyone accuses me of being a miserable bastard, I laughed at the end of Guardians. It fits the tone of the film, but Carol asking them to watch a movie didn't. The joke from Jerry was fine, but this was just overkill and made a bit of a mockery of the whole situation. On the other hand, I get that some people out there will make the argument that for a person living in an apocalypse who hadn't seen a film for seven to eight Eight years or however long it's been, maybe this would be the thing that would convince them to go out and help someone. I mean, I know that I said just last week that I understood why Ezekiel and Co put themselves in danger for a projector light in the first place, but this just felt different. I couldn't take any of it seriously, and perhaps I wasn't supposed to, but for me, the Highwayman group 
as a concept just didn't work. I would say that the worst moment which just about topped it all off for me was when they appeared in just a nick of time to save Tara. If arriving at the last second to save the day isn't cliche enough, the scene also included cheesy music that seemed ripped out of an old western playing in the background, and an atrocious line of dialogue uttered by the lead cowboy. We're the highwaymen, here to escort you to the fair at your service. Oh Jesus, just shoot me, this is really bad. I know it might seem like I'm unfairly ripping on this guy, but the thing is, to me, he just doesn't come off as cool or charismatic, he's just a bit ridiculous. Maybe it's not his fault, maybe it's the bad dialogue that he had to work with, but I think his group were almost as bad as the Wolves or the Junkyard group when they were first introduced. The one thing that I did find interesting about this group, however, is that it's inferred that they may be working with the Whisperers. I'm sure that everyone picks up on the symbol on the back of a letter handed to Ezekiel being the same one that is used by the Whisperers, so perhaps their presence at the Kingdom will allow Alpha's group to plot an attack from within. Moving away from Ezekiel now to Daryl, Connie, Lydia and Henry, who are the other major focus of this week episode. Things pick up immediately from where they left off with them still on the run from the Whisperers after Daryl led a pack of walkers into their camp. In retaliation, Alpha has instructed her best man Beta to recapture Lydia, with this nemesis-like figure being a thorn in Daryl's arse throughout. I agreed with Lydia that Daryl and Connie's plan of hiding in a building to escape the walkers didn't seem like the smartest idea in the world, due to the potential of them ending up being trapped inside. And Daryl's argument that walkers can't climb stairs didn't really wash with me because I'm sure I've seen them climb stairs before. I know he used a barricade to stop them, but surely enough walkers could eventually break down most barricades. I don't know, maybe I'm just being picky, but it seemed like Daryl and co were just lucky that things worked out for them. After encountering said barricade, Beta's walkers are stopped in their trap, at which point he takes a couple of whispers upstairs towards where Daryl is hiding. Daryl versus Beta and the whispers was probably my favourite part of the entire episode. I just absolutely love the setting, especially especially with all the white sheets hanging up everywhere as it seemed like a scene that wouldn't feel out of place in an 80s horror movie. There's this one particular camera shot that I love which begins by focusing on a whisperer who's sneaking around knife in tow with a sheet of cloth separating him from Daryl. The camera then moves to Daryl behind the other side of the sheet, axe in hand, waiting to swing and kill him. Daryl swings the axe into his shadow and blood splatters across the linen as the whisperer falls to his death. Ultimately, you could say that this was just another scene of Daryl killing someone which isn't anything new, but I loved how the tension was ramped up before Daryl delivered that final killing blow. I've said it before in my videos and I'll say it again, I'm not a production buff or anything like that, I'm not even going to pretend that I know anything about cinematography, but even I can appreciate how well shot this scene was. After dispatching the Whisperer minions, Daryl patiently waited by the door of his crossbow to take down Beta as he walked through. However, Daryl didn't account for Beta walking in using another door as a shield, making his arrows useless and forcing the two of them into a one-on-one -on -one fight. Daryl's fight against the colossal Beta was brilliant to watch. Beta is a bloody machine, punching through walls and repeatedly putting Daryl on the floor. I got a sense that even though he was beating the shit out of Daryl, he was actually holding back a tad because he wanted to find out where Lydia was. I'm sure he could have just slammed Daryl's head into the saw blade when he was holding him over it, but he was instructed to find Lydia, so Daryl was no good to him dead. Daryl eventually manages to escape Beta by hiding under one of the floorboards, at which point Beta decides it's a good time to start monologuing in front of an elevator shaft. Yeah, maybe Beta isn't the brightest guy in the world. Daryl sees his moment and pushes him down the hole and walks away, figuring it's job done. However, we don't actually see Beta die or even what is down the hole after he fell down it at this point with the episode just carrying on as normal. I knew immediately at this point that Beta wasn't dead because we all know that unless we've seen someone's head mashed to pieces with a baseball bat, there's always a chance that they could survive by hiding under a dumpster. Joking aside, Beta didn't survive by hiding under a dumpster, instead he survived by, well, I don't really know how he survived. The episode ends with a scene showing just how huge the fall was that Beta had taken, before then showing him alive and screaming into the air like some kind of supervillain. This was a bit weird, and I have no idea how he survived the fall. I know this guy is a bit of a beast, but this should have killed him. On one hand, I think it's a bit stupid that he managed to survive, however on the other, I kind of like the fact that Daryl now has his own villain to contend with who's going to want to get back at him in any way that he can. Honestly, I think that Vader is pretty bloody dull in the comics, but the TV version is a different beast altogether, and part of me is glad he survived because now we get to see more of him. Whilst Daryl was busy dealing with Beta, Henry had his own problems with him ending up being stabbed by one of the Whisperers. It was difficult to see where the Whisperer actually got him, and initially I thought he'd been stabbed in the stomach and was going to die, which would have been a nice twist. I mean, can you imagine just how Daryl would have dealt with Lydia if Henry had died? 
I think she'd probably be safer with Alpha if that was the case. Speaking of Daryl dealing with Lydia, Daryl has a change of heart regarding her that comes at the end of the episode. And although it was pretty predictable, for me it worked. Lydia had proven herself by using the dog to kill the Whisperer that was attacking Henry, and earlier in the episode Daryl had seen the pair of them kiss. And by that I mean Lydia and Henry, not Lydia and the dog kissing. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that come the end of the episode, Daryl knew how much Lydia meant to Henry because he cock-plucked him previously, and he also knew how much Henry meant to Lydia because she was willing to indirectly kill her own people to protect him. So this is why he changed his mind, even knowing how much it would piss off Alpha. And like I said a moment ago, for me it worked. I believed in the reasons as to why Daryl came to this conclusion, so although it might have been a bit of a predictable outcome, I'm all for it. Before I wrap up, special mention goes to Connie, who made me laugh when Henry and Lydia decided to follow her over Daryl. Despite the fact that she doesn't talk, she's a very likeable character, and her and Daryl strangely complement one another, because due to her deafness, he has to be more open with her. And ironically, he actually seems to talk more in the presence of a deaf lady than when he's with people who can hear him. Connie is very expressive, which makes her very easy to understand. For example, I like how she underlined something she wrote to Daryl to show that she was angry with him. She's a cool character and I hope she sticks around for a while yet. However, with a Daryl agreeing with Henry that there's a bigger world out there come the end of the episode, perhaps her Daryl, Henry and Lydia will disappear from Atlanta with them appearing in their own spin-off show with Connie as the main character. We've already got Fear the Walking Dead, but welcome to the new spin-off show, Can't Hear the Walking Dead. I'm really sorry, that was terrible. Anyway, in conclusion, half of this episode is great and half of it isn't. I found the weaker half of this instalment to be worse than the weaker half during the last episode, but thankfully Daryl's arc was enough for me to see this entry through to the end. So not the best episode of this season, but it still had enough good stuff for me to not end up hating it, and I'm still looking forward to seeing what comes next with season 9's last couple of episodes. So there you have it, that's the end of the video. Please let me know your thoughts below. Did you like this episode? Did you hate it, or did you kind of agree with me that it was okay-ish and it had a few problems? Anyway, whatever your thoughts are, as always, please let me know in the comments below. And yeah, that's about it, really, don't have anything else to say. So, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, take care and goodbye. Alright, that's enough waving. What are you doing?